So once we've defined the type of excitation we want and the points and other parameters, as I showed in the previous video, we can start scanning here. So I'm just going back to the periodic chirp. If I start the scan, it will offer me the option to save the file in a certain format. So this is a one point. I'll just give this a new file name because it's the second type of measurement with these settings. One hertz to two kilohertz pit chirp over six seconds. Uh, that was 1.6 seconds, I beg your pardon. So we should make that say 6.4 which is the duration in this case, which is given down here. So essentially it's this one, but the second of the scans for that on this date. And it's not burst random, it's burst chirp. I apologize. In fact, it's the first of these. 6.4. Okay, save this one. Now the um, system automatically collects measurements at these various points. It's going to take five averages at each point and incrementally track through those. You can see that's one out of five, just down here where my cursor is. And it happens to be at this point, it will make its way through automatically scanning from one point to the next. It will take around about eight minutes to complete that scan. And um, there are some other things that we can keep an eye on over here. You can see the vibration response level, which varies as the chirp varies and, and, synch and, and coincides with resonant frequencies of the tower. But I'm gonna leave that one running. And here's one that we recorded earlier. And so I've now moved to presentation mode. Okay, so here you can see different functions that are collected. So I showed previously the uh, frequency response function and um, if we look at that on a db scale here you can see the resonant peaks within the frequency response function we also have a keep an eye on the coherence function here so coherence should be one um, that means high signal to noise ratio on both response and measurement channels we can also look at the individual vibration and reference channel information but at this stage, we're mostly interested in the FRF. Typically, we'll look at magnitude and phase. And here you can see a response, uh, sorry, a resonant frequency, three, three really clear resonances and phase shifts through 180 degrees at each of those, as well as at the anti-resonance, which is what we expect to see for this kind of measurement. Um, here's our structure. If I zoom in, you can see the indices with which these are marked, 1 to 11, as I described in the first video. And the next step is to um, define the bands that the processing could be or would be conducted at. So I've got the burst random measurement open here. I showed quickly a burst random in the previous video, video two of the series. Um, I go back to my spectrum down here. I can double click on the frequency axis and just make that a little bit less frequency. And then I'm going to define these peaks by dragging a cursor around them in here. So there's one, two, three different peaks. You can see that those are identified in the peak table. So this is the range of the band 8.75 to 26, and the peak is found uh, at these frequencies. When I close this window, the software will do some processing. And it says, do you want to keep replace recalculate frequency bands? We'll say yes. And now in my drop down over here, I can see that I've got those three modes now processed. And if I rotate the image like this, it's a two dimensional structure. It's only been um, set up as a 2D. Um, I'm missing a couple of uh, triangles there. So those points haven't been connected yet. I can do that by, um, ah, I can't do that at the moment because I'd, I'd need two hands to do that and, and, I, and I have got one holding the camera. So here are the various different mode frequencies immediately shown. And we'll export these data from this channel, so from this file over here, 
to an ASMODF file format and we'll also save them as SVD file formats.